Welcome to RPTV Weekly News Show. My name is Kedar and my co-hosts are Alanis, Raymond and Fred. We present news that impacts on Regent Park and the surrounding areas. In this episode, we present the following news for the week of November 11th to November 18th. Election results in Toronto Centre 2022. Cafe Zuzu is now open in Regent Park. Regent Park celebrates October Fun Fest. New Park in St. James Town at 60 Howard Street. Bang Co-op celebrates Street Festival 2022. Toronto community groups challenge city and developers over new affordable housing bylaw. Toronto Police 51 Division meets with Regent Park residents at Daniel Spectrum. Toronto Mayor calls for immediate funding to help prevent service cuts and layoffs. COVID-19 and vaccination update and events and jobs in Regent Park. Election results in Toronto Centre 2022. After leading in early polls, Chris Moyes won election to City Council for Ward 13 on October 24th with 48.5% and a total of 10,457 votes. A former Toronto District School Board trustee, Moyes was endorsed by former Toronto Centre Councillor Kristen Wong Tam now the riding's NDP MPP. Campaign ally Deborah Williams was elected as the Toronto District School Board trustee for wards 10 and 13, while Kevin Morrison won as Catholic trustee for Ward 9. Moyes thanks voters, volunteers, campaign organizers, and his grandmother. I came to Canada when I was seven years old with my grandmother and one suitcase. The road has not been easy, but Moyes is proud of what he's accomplished. Moyes received 48.5% of the votes cast and a record-breaking Toronto election with less than 30% of eligible voters having cast a ballot. The all-time high was in 2014 when 60% of eligible voters participated. Across the province, about 36% of Ontarians voted municipally, the worst election turnout in 40 years. John Tory was re-elected Mayor of Toronto with 60% of the votes and a total of 342,158 votes. Mayor Tory credits his ability to secure funding for on Toronto from all levels of government as part of his campaign success. He was elected for historic, albeit predictable third time. If Tory completes his four-year term, he will become Toronto's longest-serving mayor. Cafe Zuzu opens with an official soft launch in Regent Park. On October 26, Cafe Zuzu had its official soft launch from 8 a.m. till noon at 55 Dundas Street East in Regent Park, where they handed out complimentary coffee to the first 555 guests. In honor of Zuzu's address on 555 Dundas Street East, Cafe's doors were officially open on Friday, October 28, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Additional beverages, pastries, and retail were also available for purchase. Cafe Zuzu merges Janet Zuccarian's passion for uniquely soulful hospitality with that of giving back and making a difference in our community. And it is home to a morning cafe with Italian pastry and time-honored beverages, co-working spaces, retail selections, and bottle shop. And the neighborhood restaurant where people come to escape the everyday. RPTV interviewed Cafe Zuzu's general manager, Lindsay Stevenson, and social media and marketing coordinator, Christina DeLuca. Let's hear what they have to say. Hi there, my name is Lindsay. I'm the general manager here at Cafe Zuzu. Hi, I'm Christina. I am the social media and marketing coordinator here for Gusto 54 Restaurant Group. All right, so here at Cafe Zuzu, we are going to be open daily as a cafe, uh, 8 a.m. every morning, seven days a week, uh, running until 6 p.m. Uh, so for the cafe, we're going to offer lots of espresso-based beverages, we also have a very cool nitro brew, uh, cold brew machine, um, many delicious Italian pastries, 
pizza uh, and ready to order sandwiches, including breakfast sandwiches. Um, coming soon, we're also gonna have a bottle shop, uh, which will be very convenient for the Regent Park community to come in for your last minute grocery needs, um, as well as beautiful wines um, and specialty beverages. So Cafe Zuzu and Gusto 54 Restaurant Group, we are committed to the Regent Park community and we will be offering monthly meeting opportunities for organizations here local in the community in four different categories, women in leadership, arts and culture, food insecurity, and education programs such as shopping as well as sustainability. And we are so excited to be able to also offer Macchiato Monday. So every single Monday, a dollar proceeds will go to Fred Victor, one dollar from every Macchiato. In addition to our support here in the Regent Park community, Gusto 54 Restaurant Group has always been supportive of philanthropic efforts through our Gusto Gives Back program, where we support programs such as our mini chefs, teaching kids how to safely prepare and uh, healthily prepare food in their own kitchen, as well as other combined efforts in terms of donating to local organizations through each of those different restaurants as well. As far as job opportunities go, we're really excited to host some job fairs. Um, we're going to need a lot of uh, new hires once our restaurant doors open. Um, so we're really excited to kind of, uh, you know, have job fairs host for the, the local youth in the community. Um, and we all will also be partnering with George Brown uh, to do a little bit of a culinary program apprenticeship um, where we will do a little bit of training at George Brown, have those chefs come in fully prepared and excited. Um, and we also think that that's the, the best candidate for us. Um, so we're super excited to do that. We are so grateful to be part of the Regent Park community. From day one, everyone has welcomed us in with open arms and we are so eager and excited to work with you in the future and other opportunities. Um, and just be part and serve the Regent Park community. So thank you so much. Yeah, a huge thank you. The community has just opened their arms to us. And today we had our soft opening and it has blown our mind the support that we've had. Uh, so we feel super welcome and we're super excited. Thank you. Regent Park celebrates October Fun Fest. On October 29th, 2022, the Regent Park community celebrated October's Fun Fest held at the Big Park. The neighborhood enjoyed music, storytelling, face painting, lots of candy, and pumpkin giveaways. Members of the community really got into the spirit of Halloween and came out dressed in costumes and everyone got to enjoy delicious treats and hot apple crisps pies and cotton candy. There are cool stations like pumpkin carving, and face painting as well. The community got the opportunity to take lots of cool pictures and get free books from the Children's Book Bank. The event was brought by Friends of Regent Park, TNG Community Service, Fred Victor, City of Toronto, Fresh Co., and the Children's Book Bank, MPP, Christine Wontang was also there showing her support for the Regent Park community. I'm here today to celebrate community. It is a beautiful autumn afternoon and of course we're heading to the end of October which means only one thing, Halloween, which is one of my favorite, favorite holidays and seasons. It's so great because the kids come out, they get dressed up and best part of all, they get candy. <laughs> Um, so it's it's amazing to see the community out in full force. We've got pumpkin carvings. They're handing out new books for children, uh, and they're also giving away uh, treats. Uh, the parents are having a great time, and it just feels like after a really difficult and challenging pandemic period, seeing people out in the community together again is really heartwarming. Hello, how are you guys doing today? I think we are good. We already finished baked apple crisp, our bake oven, and it's selling one dollar.
They look tasty. Yeah. My name is Kidar. Hi Kidar, you want one for you? I just might. Yeah. I'm with Region Park TV. Okay. And what brought you here today at Shafi? Um, because uh, we are part of the uh, Fred Victor Community Garden and the Friends of Region Park are volunteer and we love to support them. And this is like a last couple of years they're coming and doing it's like a, it's a for our community. And I also live in the community, work in the community. So that's why I love to be here. I love it. I think this is amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. New Park in St. James Sound at 60 Howard Street. St. James Sound has a new green addition. In October, residents welcome the 60 Howard Street Park. The name of this park has not been decided. The name will be determined at a later date. Construction finished in September and the park officially opened on October. The new park features a slide in an open lawn and natural play area, picnic tables, and new plants and trees. 60 Howard Street Park was built as a response to the community need for a green space for children. Its design was developed with the help of the community and stakeholders. Main Co-op celebrates annual Street Festival 2022. Toronto's first social housing project, Bain Co-op, celebrated its annual street festival at 100 Bain Avenue with food, music, entertainment, and lots of games and activities for kids and adults. Members of the community enjoyed an open stage with karaoke all day, DJs, drum circle, and live bands. The street festival had artists showcase silent art auction, portraits of Bain, jewelry vendors, info tables from the Tamarack Community Development Project, the Pollinator Project, and the Honor Canoe. There were lots of food with all home baked goodies, lunch barbecue, late night barbecue, 100 free hot dogs at noon. Kids also had fun with a bike parade craft table, reading card making, basketball challenges, golf putting game, jumpy tent, face painting, balloon twister, and various arts activities and more. Toronto community groups challenge city and developers over new affordable housing bylaw. A group of developers from across Toronto have filed overlapping, separate appeals to block implementation of the City of Toronto's new affordable housing bylaw. To counter this, the Toronto Community Benefits Network, along with the Region Park Neighbourhood Association, ACORN, and other community advocates and organizations in the city held a press conference at the City Hall Media Room. After years of assessment, the City of Toronto amended its affordable housing bylaw in 2022 to ensure all development that receives municipal incentives and credits for being affordable housing are actually affordable to the average Torontonian by using income to define affordability rather than market rents. Some developers want this change struck down. Minto, Dunpar, Greenwin, Carly, Metcap, Pemberton Group, and their subsidiary companies are appealing at the Ontario Land Tribunal OLT. These developers are seeking to reinstate old definitions that allow them to call rental units affordable, even though rent usually exceeds 30% of the average income of Torontonians. The city's new definition of affordable rental housing is beneficial for tenants. The new bylaw sets rent for an affordable bachelor unit, for example, at $812 a month, which the average single person in Toronto can afford. These developers want the affordable rate reverted back to be based on the median rent charged by landlords, which has consistently been 50% above the rent affordable to the average income of a single person in Toronto. The city will defend its bylaw at the Ontario Land Tribunal. Mm. Community groups and advocates through a press conference called on the developers to stop fighting the City of Toronto's new criteria 
or affordable housing, saying that doing so exposes their greed and willingness to exploit people's suffering. Wali Kogali Ali of the Regent Park Neighborhood Association said, developers in Toronto make enough money right now and urge them to drop their appeals at the tribunal hearing. This is about greed. This is not about what's best for the public. The good residents of Toronto and it's deplorable that developers are undermining our democratic principles, Kogali said. It's important that the Ontario Land Tribunal Appeal does not allow developers to exempt themselves from their part of the solutions. We all agree that we need today because we're in the midst of a housing crisis. Um, this is exactly why so many communities, residents and housing advocates work with the City of Toronto for an income-based definition of affordable housing. Let's remember that this is not about solutions. This is about greed. And if you look at the back here, we've got, we're talking about housing, not greed. We as a coalition uh, that is uh, for inclusive development, equitable, inclusive development, we want to make sure that our developers don't get to dictate what affordable rental and housing ownership looks like in our city. We do. The residents of this city do. The residents of this province uh, are responsible to make that happen. And it's irresponsible for developers to, challenging, to challenge housing solutions today, right? So I want to encourage members of uh, the public, members of our community, to get in contact with their members of parliament provincially, get in contact with their city councillor, and also get in contact with their federal MPs, because housing is a basic human right and is a responsibility of all three levels of government. Toronto Police 51 Division meets with Regent Park residents at Daniel Spectrum. Toronto Police 51 Division held its quarterly meeting with Regent Park residents at Daniel Spectrum, inviting the community to meet the neighborhood officers Mohamed Osman, Nigel Thomas, and Sergeant Henry Dyke. In the meeting, they discussed and gave updates on critical incidents, the community programs available for the youth, and they also informed the community about the statistics pertaining to the crimes that took place in Regent Park and gave the audience an opportunity to ask questions and voice their opinions. The officers provided a platform for community members to have their voices heard. The meeting's main goal was to have a better relationship between Regent Park residents and the Toronto Police Services. The officers had reports showing facts that crime in Regent Park is increasingly going down and asked the neighborhood to help them to keep this trajectory from going up by working together. Candidates for the 2022 municipal election for Guard 13, Nikki Guard, Caroline Murphy, Chris Moyes were in the attendance. Kenneth Slater, a community figure and a manager at Dixon Hall, was also present. I was definitely satisfied with the police. I knew I was like oh, what I expected, but I was disappointed in the community. It, <laughs> it felt like a debated debate instead of a solution based, you know what I mean? It's very easy to sit back and criticize and critique, you know, somebody or something, you know, but it's a harder thing to put yourself in a position like, what was the solution? So some of the political dance that was going on, you know, to me felt like it wasn't really getting at the issue of community safety, you know, or community concern. It was more so trying to leverage their points to get whatever they're looking for every day. I mean, some of the things that the officers is just an update, so they were just updating. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It wasn't them really kind of debating anything back and forth, but I felt it was a it was a missed opportunity. The main thing is that we got young people in this community that's feeling unsafe, that's engaging in different behaviors, and the adults of the community is so disconnected from what's happening, and that's the piece that I think we got to get better. Toronto Mayor calls for immediate funding to help prevent service cuts and layoffs. Toronto Mayor John Tory is calling for an immediate funding commitment from the federal and provincial governments to help the city get out of red, warning of service cuts and layoffs if they don't get any additional cash. Council approved a 2022 operating budget back in February with a $1.4 billion deficit under the assumption that it would receive additional funding from other levels of government. In a letter which was sent to both Ontario Premier Doug Ford and Minister of Finance Christia Freeland, Tory says the deficit is now about $815 million. He stressed the shortfall is directly and only as a result 
of the impacts of the COVID-19. This includes lost TTC revenue, an increase in the number of shelters in the city, and the loss of revenue due to travel restrictions and the drop in person working. Tory warned if Ford and Freeland don't step up, deep cuts to services may be necessary. Tory is asking that Ford and Freeland provide an immediate funding commitment for both 2022 and 2023 by the end of the month. COVID-19 and vaccination update. Toronto's homeless community shares stories of struggle experienced during COVID-19 pandemic. Toronto's most vulnerable residents, along with those who support and advocate for them, say they had no choice but to band together during the pandemic to ensure people experiencing homelessness and those at risk of becoming unhoused were taken care of and they're now sharing some of those stories. Dreads, who has stayed at a number of encampments in downtown Toronto parks, said over the last two and a half years, he and many others experiencing homelessness have been repeatedly let down by the system meant to take care of and protect them. Diane Chan McNally worked for the Toronto Drop-In Network during most of the pandemic and said life-saving services she helped coordinate and advocate for were often a last priority. We were the only spaces that stayed open the entire time. We never shut down at all, she said, adding, despite seeing a steep, steep increase in need, Several community-based services and local agencies saw their city funding significantly slashed in 2022. McNally, who is the author of Encampments to Homes, A Path Forward, which provided a series of policy recommendations to the City of Toronto, also fought hard during the pandemic for access to vaccines, as well as personal protective equipment for both workers, volunteers, and community members. For more than a year, street nurse Kathy Crow and outreach worker Greg Cook compiled dozens of heart-wrenching stories of survival into a 280-page book titled Displacement City, Fighting for Health and Homes in a Pandemic. The book, which is dedicated to each person who died without housing in Toronto during the COVID-19 pandemic, was launched on November 9th at the Church of the Holy Trinity. It features pieces by more than 30 contributors, including Dreads, McNally, Dodd, and Campbell. Crow, who called Displacement City a testimony to what Toronto's unhoused population experienced during the pandemic, said their goal was to give voice to the people who fought for the city's most vulnerable during the pandemic. Dr. Time warns of flu upswing. New COVID-19 variants as viral triple threat continues. Chief Public Health Officer Dr. Teresa Tam is warning of increased growth in new COVID-19 variants as respiratory viruses inundate hospitals across the country. Tam says the triple threat of all three variants is posing a challenge for health systems and points to the need for stepped up precautions. The resumption of school, work, and indoor gatherings has invited more viral circulation, and she stressed the importance of personal protective measures. I know we're all tired and we know only too well the long list of good habits that can help keep us and others healthier. So let's focus in on the top three recommendations. First, boost your immunity. If it has been six months since the last COVID-19 vaccine dose or booster, get vaccinated with a bivalent Omicron targeting booster. It is also a good time to get your flu shot. Secondly, protect your respiratory tract from invading viruses. Keep up with the hand washing, wearing good quality, well-fitted face masks when indoors, especially if you can't avoid being in crowded or poorly ventilated spaces. And lastly, reduce spread to others. If you have symptoms, please stay at home. This helps protect us all, including those at high risk of severe respiratory illness, such as those who are immunocompromised, as well as young infants, young children, pregnant people, and older adults. Protecting those who are at highest risk and can't be vaccinated or don't mount a strong protection is also key to protecting health system capacity for us all. Vaccination and wellness clinics in the neighborhood. Walk-in wellness hubs COVID-19 and flu vaccination at 40 Oak Street. 
You can get vaccinated three to six months after the last dose or COVID-19 infection every Saturday from 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. and Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Catch up on adult and childhood immunization, blood pressure measurement, and connect with the Regent Park Community Health Center staff to explore referral options for primary care provider, cancer screening, diabetes, dentistry, access to naloxone kits, after school support for students, housing, food security, settlement, employment, and more. For more information and to book an appointment, leave a message at 416-364-2261, extension 2306. You can also access your COVID-19 vaccination clinic at the low barrier drop-in at the 519 Church Street, Wednesday, November 30th from 3 to 6 p.m. Moderna and Pfizer available and for those and bivalent booster also available for those eligible. Events in Regent Park Community. The RPNA is inviting you for the rezoning perspective. Join the community meeting on November 30th at 5.30 p.m. at that Spectrum living room to have your questions answered about the rezoning application by TCHC and Tridel. For more information, contact rpna.info at gmail.com or 416-625-7712. Sons from the Journey, you're invited to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Daniel Spectrum on Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022 at 585 Dundas Street East at 6 p.m. This community celebration will showcase the incredible arts and cultural organizations that call Daniel Spectrum home. It will also feature the world premiere of Sons from the Journey. Hope to see you there. Opening doors for the future and TCHC 2020 Vision Essay Contest open for tenants aged 18 to 29. Cash prices up to $5,000. For more information, visit the link below. And that's all for today's show. My name is Fred Alvarado and my co-hosts are Lani, Skeeter, and Raymond. And we also like to thank our team of researchers that contributed for this week's show. And from our studios at Focus Media Center, Thanks for watching and see you next week. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out all of our social media platforms. For more information, check out our website.